So the last bit to talk about uh, with respect to simple harmonic motion is energy in simple harmonic motion. And so I hope that by the end of this short lesson, you are able to describe and calculate the changing kinetic and potential energy in simple harmonic motion, and that you are able to demonstrate that the total energy in simple harmonic motion is constant and proportional to the square of the amplitude. And so what we'll do is going to be focused on mass spring systems. So we'll consider energy in mass spring systems. But of course, whatever we find here will be more generally applicable, um, essentially, to all systems in simple harmonic motion. And so the first thing to do is, is uh, to define the total energy of our system. It's going to be kinetic energy due to the motion of the mass, and then the elastic potential energy stored in the spring when it stretches um, or compresses. And so the total energy of the oscillator um, is going to be zero when it is at rest in its equilibrium position. Okay, and that's our starting point. That's where um, we'll now displace it. So we'll give it a certain velocity. And now we're going to figure out what happens to the energy. So our kinetic energy, of course, is one half mv square, where m is just the mass on the mass spring system. And so um, obviously, the kinetic energy is going to be maximum when the velocity is highest, when the speed is highest, the magnitude of the velocity is high. And it's going to be zero when the velocity is zero. So I sound like Captain Obvious here, but just making sure we're all on the same page to begin with. Similarly, potential energy of our mass spring system is given by one half kx square, where k is the spring constant. And so um, we'll see that the potential energy is going to be zero when x equals zero, and it's going to be maximum um, when x is maximum as well. So when the compression or the extension of the spring is the highest. So let's now go back to um, these figures here. If you remember from uh, our discussion mass spring system, so the position as a function of time, the velocity as a function of time, and the acceleration as a velocity of time. So the velocity is the derivative of the position with respect to time. The acceleration is the derivative of the velocity um, as a function of time. And so we've seen that if the position is undergoing simple harmonic motion with angular frequency omega, also the velocity and the acceleration are undergoing simple harmonic motion with the same angular frequency, but with a phase difference. So now let's add energy to that comparison. So let's first look at the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is going to be maximum when the velocity is highest. Okay, so um, that means right here, it's highest, right here it's lowest, and of course energy goes with v squared. So in both these points, the kinetic energy will be maximum. Okay. Now if we look at which points this corresponds to in position, those are the equilibrium positions to zero. So those are the positions where the potential energy is going to be minimum, going to be zero. Similarly, if we look at where the kinetic um, energy is minimum, well, the kinetic energy is minimum where the velocity is zero. Okay, so that's those points. And if you now look at what positions this corresponds to in our position diagram, you find that this is where the potential energy is maximum. And so you see that there is this, this exchange of energy again. You, you convert kinetic energy into potential energy. So you go from maximum potential energy and zero kinetic energy to maximum kinetic energy and zero potential um, energy. And so what does that mean then for the total energy? Well, we can calculate the total energy in our mass spring system. It's just the sum of the kinetic and the potential energy. So it's one half mv square plus one half kx square. Um, and we know something about x and we know something about v, right? We're talking about simple harmonic motion. So we know that x um, can be written as a times cosine omega t, and v, which is a derivative, as we've seen before, is minus a omega sine omega t. So we plug those things in here. So v square is going to be minus a omega square uh, times sine square of omega t. Plug in x in here um, and square that as well. So you find now that the total energy is one half m omega square a square times the sine square of omega t plus one half k a squared times the cosine square of omega t. Let's just copy over that equation um, and look at it for a minute. So we have our angular frequency here. We have our mass of our spring here. We have our spring constant here. And we have the amplitude of the system here. Okay. Um, then we have the sine square and the cosine square. And like, it would be nice if we can somehow combine uh, these expressions into one. Right? And so 
um, we can actually do that. There's omega square right here. And if you remember what omega square is, it's k over m for a mass spring system, all right? So let's plug that in. Let's plug the omega square in here. So you find now the energy is one half mk over m, a square sine square omega t. So the m drops out. So you find one half k a square times the sine square omega t plus one half k a square times the cosine square of omega t. And of course, that is just one half k a square. OK? So if we calculate the total energy in our mass spring system, what do we find? Well, we find that the total energy is one half k a square, which is a constant. So the total energy is conserved throughout the entire motion of our system. That's great. We like conservation of energy. Um, and so uh, we'll see that both the, the potential and the kinetic energy oscillate with time, right? We've seen how you convert kinetic to potential energy. So they are both changing with time, but the total energy of our system is not changing with time. That's just a constant. Importantly, the um, kinetic energy does only depend on the spring constant and the amplitude of the motion squared. Okay, and that's something that's um, key to remember. And I'll get back to that. So as I say here, there's, there's oscillations in this potential and this kinetic energy. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail, right? So the kinetic energy is one half mv square using the same um, substitution as before, right? Where the velocity is minus um, omega a times the sine of omega t. You find that this is now the expression for um, the kinetic energy. And so there's a sine square omega t there. So what, what we want to do here is have a look at what those oscillations in kinetic energy actually look like. And so oscillations we normally look as um, a cosine or a sine but not a sine square right so that sine square is is a little bit annoying there so can we do something about it well hey that's where we have um, trigonometry for um, so there is this um, identity that says that the cosine of uh, two times the angle alpha is cosine square alpha minus sine square alpha so that's something that we can use because it has a sine square there. So if we can get rid of this cosine square, we can actually express this in terms of um, a simple cosine of a different angle. And of course we can, right? So, so we want to keep the sine square here. So let's get rid of that cosine. Cosine square is just one minus sine square, right? So this expression is just one minus two times the sine square of alpha. So from this, we can now um, solve for sine square of alpha which is one minus the cosine of two alpha over two. Okay, so replacing sine square omega t by this expression, you find that the kinetic energy is now one half ka squared times one minus cosine two omega t over two. Now I did something else in here, right? So I replaced the sine square omega t by one minus cosine two omega t over two. I also used the fact that um, omega square is k over m, then the m drops out and there's a k here as we've done uh, before. And so you find now that the kinetic energy is one half k a square, which is, is the total energy, right? Times one minus cosine two omega t over um, two. So what you see is that the kinetic energy is also oscillating in time, right? It's oscillating in time. However, not with a frequency omega, but with a frequency two omega. So the kinetic energy is oscillating with a frequency that is twice the frequency of the uh, position uh, displacement. So twice the uh, frequency of the simple harmonic motion that we're actually talking about. You can do something similar for the potential energy. So the potential energy is one half kx square. If we plug in our expression for simple harmonic motion, that's one half k a square times cosine square omega t. Same as before, we want to get rid of that cosine square. So in this case, we use the same identity, uh, but now we're actually expand sine square. And then you find that um, the cosine square of an angle alpha is one plus the cosine of two alpha divided by two. Plugging that in here, this now becomes one half k a square, which again is the total energy that's now modulated by one plus the cosine of two omega t over two. And so here too, you find, that the potential energy is also oscillating in time with a frequency twice that of the position, just like the kinetic energy. And that makes sense because we're constantly, of course, changing one uh, form of energy to the other. So if one changes with twice that frequency, you expect that the other one uh, does that as well. 
Okay, so here are the expressions for the kinetic and the uh, potential energy. And of course, if you add those up, the cosine omega two drops out, you get one plus one is two over two. So you end up, of course, with the total amount of energy. Okay, and so even though both kinetic and potential energy are oscillating in time and they are oscillating at twice that frequency, the total energy again is still constant. When I emphasize here that um, whatever we have uh, derived here technically applies to uh, mass spring systems, uh, but it turns out that you can do the same for simple pendula as well. And so you can work this out for yourself if you like to, and, and you'll find essentially the same uh, the same sort of, of results. In particular, what you find is that the kinetic and the potential energy also oscillate, uh, but at twice the frequency um, of the uh, position oscillations. And the total energy is always proportional to the square of the amplitude of the oscillation. That's something which is very generally valid for any system that is undergoing um, simple harmonic motion. Okay, and then there's a few examples uh, to wrap up. So here's um, first example, two mass spring systems with the same mass or undergoing oscillatory motion with the same amplitude. System one, however, has twice the frequency of system two. How do their energies and their maximum accelerations compare? Second example, a 10 kilogram mass is traveling to the right with a speed of two meters per second on a frictionless horizontal surface. When it collides with and sticks to a second 10 kilogram mass that is initially at rest, but is attached to a spring with a spring constant of 170 Newton per meter. Find the frequency, amplitude, and period of the subsequent oscillations. And finally, you are riding in your friend's 1400 kilogram car, which has bad shock absorbers. When the car is driven over a bump at the speed of 20 meters per second, it undergoes simple harmonic motion with an amplitude of 18 centimeters and a frequency of 0.67 hertz. What fraction of the car's kinetic energy is tied up in this oscillatory motion? Try those yourself, and as usual, we'll post a solution video separately. <laughs>